All right, so when we're going to be taking this data that's on the right here, and we're actually going to make two equations with it. We don't know what A is, but we do know a couple things. And this is what we know. We know that uh, I'm going to take the larger population a later year first. So we know that at 16,719, that's going to equal A. We don't know. We don't know B. But we do know the year. The year is 2005. And one of the things that it says is let the population T be after 2000. So what's 2005 minus 2000? Five. So it's going to be B to the fifth. Okay? Oh, because I was pointing out that it was 2,000. Okay, I'm going to divide that by the second equation, which is 12,270. That's going to equal A, B to the what? To the third. third power. Good, yep. Okay, so when I do that, my A's cancel. And then 16,719 divided by 12,270. What did you get? I got 1.3626. Okay. So I got 1.3626 equals B squared. Then we do the square root to find the square root of B. Okay. And then you should have 1.17 equals B. All right. So now we need to find A. And the way we find A is we're just going to plug it back in to the first data point. Okay? So we know like we know y equals a 1.17 to the x power, right? So far. So, which data point do you want to do? The top one or the bottom one? Okay, let's do the top one, okay? So y is going to be 12,270 Well, I need to find out what A is so I can make my entire equation. Oh. Okay? So I'm using this, this top point now. I'm going to plug those in for X and Y. So A times 1.17 to the third power. It, just because that's the one I chose. You could do 2005 and use 16,000. You could do either one. 1.6. So you divide both sides by 1.6. Yep. Yep. 7,668. 7, 0.75. 0.75. Equals A. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, one thing you're going to notice when you're doing your homework uh, is that there will be some rounding differences. Okay, so if you round it to two places or if you round it to four places, it makes quite a bit of difference. It can be a difference of like 200 in population. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're checking your answers. So, yeah, so now we want to do that for 2015. So I'm going to use the, the equation y equals. 7,668, I'm just point, we'll say point 0.8, times B, which is 1.17, to the X power. What am I going to put in for X? 15, right? Correct. You're, you're going to want to round it. Yep. You can't have a point eight of a person. Yeah, <laughs> it would be a funny looking person. Yeah. Okay, so what did you guys get for this? Oh, yeah. 80, 000, 80, 819. 80, 819. 0. 0.35. 0. 0.35, but we can't have a point three five a person, so I'm going to leave it like this. Make sense? Well, if they tell you that, if they tell you to do that, that's what you want to do because these numbers can get really big if you don't.
All right. So let's look at 1B. We're going to do the same thing. On this one, we have uh, certain cell types to be 100 on the second day and 2,700 on the fifth day. Okay? So I'm going to put the fifth day first. That's 2,700 equals A, B to the fifth. Okay, and then on the second day I had 100, A, B to the second. Okay? So 2,700 divided by 100, that is 27. The A's cancel, and I have B to the third left. Okay? So now on this one, I want to take the third root. You can do that in your calculator by going 27 and use the caret symbol and then 1 divided by 3. That works that way. No, it's the third root. So this will be, the, yeah, the answer should be 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27. Okay? All right, so now we know B is 3. And then we're going to plug that in to one of the days. It doesn't matter which one we pick. So I'm going to say let's do 100. So 100 equals A, 3 to the second, right? Not 6, but what's 3 times 3? Oh, yeah, so we're going to divide by 9 on both sides because this is the same thing as saying 100 equals 8 times 9. Divide both by 9. 11 .1 yep, 11.1 repeating. So I'm going to leave it as 11.11. .11. Okay, so our e equation is y equals 11.11, .11, 3 to the x. There it is. Okay, so the next question says, what is the number of cells on the seventh day? So we're just going to take this to the seventh power. And I got 24,057. Okay, yeah, so this really should be 24,027.57 or 0.6. Okay, this still didn't work out right. So, yeah, 3 to the 7th power times by 11.11. Yeah, okay, so I don't know why I'm having trouble with this. 24,297.57. Oh, okay. On the next part, you guys, there's a whole section there. I'm not going to go over this right now because I want you to go to the Moodle site and tonight... Your assignment, one of the assignments is to look at whatever device you have, watch the video for that device, and see how to do the regression. Okay? So now I want you to turn the page over because we're going to do a couple things in the back. Okay, a half life. The half life is the amount of time. It takes an, or, an original quantity to decay to half that amount. OK. 
Okay? So if you know the half-life of a radioactive element and the amount of the sub substance at one point of time, you can find the original amount. <laughs> And this is kind of a cool application, and it's been done before, quite often in crime scenes. Okay, so in 2007, the element pol polonium was in the news, and London police detectives investigated the poisoning of a former Russian KGB agent, Alexander Litvinko. Since polonium has never been known to be used as a poisoning, the authorities did not look for evidence of it until weeks after the crime had taken place. As a consequence, they had to look backward from the evidence to calculate the amount of polonium used on the victim. They made use of this fact that the half-life of polonium is 108 days. You need that information. Okay? Oh, 138, sorry. Okay? So that's information you need to solve this. So the first part says, detectives in the investigation found polonium in a cup in a hotel that he had visited. Suppose four micrograms were found and it had been 30 days since he was there. How much was in the cup originally? Okay? So, remember A in our, um, it's a radioactive element. Okay, so remember that A is our original amount when we're looking at an exponential. So we're looking at what the half-life, so one half of A is at 24 days. Okay? Oh wait, 138. 138 days because it's that's a half life. Okay? Wait, so why are we using 138 but you just underline 30? Okay, because we're going to use that in the second part. So first of all, we got to find out what B is. Okay? And we know that the half life is 138 days. Don't we find A We will. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to divide both sides by A. Those cancel out, right? Yep, so B to the 138. Okay, that's the half life. So now I need to find the 138th root of one half. So yeah, yep, yeah, right. So it'll be one half, if you put it in your calculator using the caret, one divided by 138. And you should get from that, I got 0 0.995. If you put a parenthesis around it, it should. Okay? Make sure you put parentheses around it. Okay. So now I know that my equation is y equals a times 0.995x, right? Now, looking back at this part that I underlined earlier, 4 at 30 days. So I can find A by putting 4 in for Y. A, 0.995 at 30. Okay? So if you put in your calculator and find out what 0.995 to the 30th power is, divide both sides, you should get... 4,649. That is your original amount. Alright? So, now you have A, now you have B, so you can make your model on part B. This should be Y equals 4,649 times .995 to the X power. All right. That's the, yep, using the half-life. The next part is the same kind of thing. You use the same method. Okay? So in this one, the substance has a half-life of 24 years. So I already know that one-half A equals A times B to the 24th. Right. OK, 
Okay, so now I can get rid of the a if I divide both of them by that. So I have one half equals b to the 24th. Put that in your calculator. And you should have 0.972. And then you do, um, you do 50 equals a point nine seven two, um, and then b. Um, it, the other way around. So your y value is 80 grams. That's the amount. The years are what goes to the x. Okay, so years is 50, goes right there. Okay, so if you, if you fill that out, you can find A. You guys, one thing I, I just reread this. It says if a sample of 80 grams today is being observed, how long will rem how much will remain after 50? So Isn't actually, it should have been it should have been this 80 times this to the 50th. So 80 yeah, because like it's saying if you're starting today, 80 year, 80 grams being observed today. It's going to be 80 because we're, we're talking about from now to the future. <laughs> yeah, how much the original is. And today it's 80. Yeah. Wait, so 